If the third symphony is the Eroica, I consider the fourth symphony the Organica. It feels very organic to me. And there's a naturalism that comes from it. Of course, after Eroica, probably the creative genius of Beethoven needed a little bit of rest. That's why the beginning is very Apollinian and not Dioniso, what you expect. And in the first movement, we're looking at the earth and water and trees and dirt and seeing how they wind and they wind away. By the time we get to the second movement, we've moved to the water and it's dark and it's deep, but there's also a light that's coming from above. There's a, there's a brightness, there's a kindness. But the circles are being obscured by these organic undersea shapes that we don't understand. Is one of those movements where Beethoven shows a tenderness which you don't associate to the character of this giant. Now the third movement is a little bit shorter, but it's also bigger and grander in a way. We realize that the organic forms and shapes that we've seen on the earth and in the water also apply to the cosmic scale. They apply to galaxies and the universe, and all those rules are the same. Until we get to the fourth movement of this symphony where those rules don't even matter. It is the circles themselves that are now dominating the landscape rather than the landscape dominating the circles. And it is a preview to what's going to happen in the beginning of the fifth symphony.